Well, good afternoon. Um, we're going to work on bows again today, and uh, I've been tillering a bow, this one here, and it's been tapered in that, and I haven't explained that yet, but be, what I've found is this particular bow is so heavy, it's about a hundred pounds rough tillered, and I can't string it anymore. Maybe 25 years ago I could have stringed this thing, but the, my problem with my thumbs and tendonitis and stuff, I can't string this thing by hand. And I put a bow stringer on it and pulled and pulled, and it's hurting my hand too much to pull it because the string is a standard size string, which is actually short for tillering a bow. When you're going to tiller a bow to start with, it's always much heavier than where you're going to have it. So what you want to do is have a string that is you know an inch to an inch and a half longer than it should be so that you don't have to pull it so far to string it and then you can tiller it bring the weight down closer to where you want it while you're straightening the limbs out and then when you take that string off you put the proper size string on it you'll be able to restring it more easily and then you can do the final tillering so what I'm going to show you today is not bow work but string work so uh, you can't just buy strings for tillering bows. I suppose you could go buy a string that is built for a bow two inches longer. Like I'm building a 64 inch bow here and my bows take a little longer string than what's considered an archery manufacturer organization standard length. We're going to build a string. All right. So first thing what you do is you need some B50 string. You can get this from online easy enough from a archery store of some sort. You need that and you need some kind of serving line. I use Kevlar because it, if you do it nice and tight it lasts longer. When you're doing bows the notches are kind of sharp and edgy and if you use just Dacron pretty soon it's all frayed up and kind of ugly and I've had plenty of them like that. So I've gone to this a little more expensive, lasts a little longer. I don't have to redo the servings on the strings. And this little device here is a server and you can buy these from bow stores and if you look the string weaves through these holes and that keeps tension on the uh, spool so you get a uniform tension wrapping the string on the string so I'm going to show you all this and how to start and finish and all that and if you're it's the same if you want to build a custom string to the right length you want then what you really need to do then is you also need some Martin glue and I like Martin glue the best uh, other than True Flight which is a good glue but True Flight gets a little brittle and Martin stays kind of supple for a bow string that's flexing all the time the Martin cement is a better product alright True Flight's better for feathers okay so what we got to do now is we have to go and we have to tie this off and I have two posts I've made a little block well, I should relocate. This block right here is just some hardwood with a hard maple dowel on it. Aluminum dowels work better. They don't flex under pressure. Uh, and when I build these, I always make it a little longer than I want because after 16 or 18 wraps of Dacron, it pulls in slightly and the string's a little shorter. So I always make them, if you're doing a 61 inch string, then sediment sides of the strings are 61 and a quarter apart. So I have one clamped down there, and, uh, and I have another one right there clamped down there. You can see that all right at the other end of the workbench. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, let me flip this, take our bow tough. Actually, it's not, it's called bow tough? No. It's just called B50 Dacron Bowstring Wax. All right, so I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to tie a falconer's knot actually to hold it on the end. Any knot will do as long as it's easy to undo later. Alright, so you can see here's the string here. It's like a bow for your shoe except no bow on the other side, a half a bow. And I can pull on it and it stays. Now I'll be able to actually wrap this around the posts and when I'm done I can untie that and, and tie it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that around. So now you can see what I'm doing. The post is in the front right there and the post is in the back down there. I've got my line and I'm going to go and I'm going to wrap it around 
and keep it about the same height on both dowels. And since this bow is very heavy, I'm going to put 18 strands on it, okay? Alright, there's no point you watching this. Alright, I'm on my last wrap here. What I have now, and I've come up, and I'm on the 18th strand. So now what I need to do, is I have the tail here, of the other piece. I'm going to pull it, and that's going to give me my end that I'm going to tie to. Alright? So there we go. We got our end here, and we have that there. So we're going to do a double square knot. So that's underneath and over underneath and over two times pull that up to the peg now this string is on top this one comes out the bottom so when you tie this square knot you have to make sure the one on top goes over on top one two times alright now when we pull it it's like a double surgeon's knot snug it tight done alright so now we can just cut that need a little pocket knife for that. You can leave a little bit of an edge on it. Don't pull it too close because you're going to wrap that up ultimately anyway. Alright, so now you see I have these spread. Those threads are kind of spread just to keep it easy. So now I'm going to pull those up there. And I'm going to come down to the other side and do the same thing. So now we have the makings of our first bow. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mark where the wrappings go. We're going to do it on this end and uh, what I do is I just simply tie off a piece of string. I have some left over. Alright, so I'm going to want to come to here on that side. Now I'm going to cut a little piece of string off. You could use a felt marker but the problem with that is on black bowstring that doesn't work very well now what I forgot to do is the knot right here don't leave it on the end slide it down to about there so I have to move that back all right there so I have my string here I have the knot here so the loop is going to be there that knot is going to be wrapped into the bowstring and that will help secure the knot if you're really worried of course you could always add a little bit of glue to that knot I don't think it'll really work because it's waxed bowstring and glue doesn't adhere to wax worth a darn. So there we go. Now I have that one marked. I'm going to do the same. I have a piece of thread, you see, right there, and a piece of thread down there. That's where I start, and I wrap around, and that's where I end. And you'll see in a minute why that's important. Let me do the other side. Is I am going to rotate this. Now I have the two strings here, so what I'm going to do is slide that around all right and I'm sliding it around to get them ends where I can work on them easily all right there you see I have the two knots here and the two knots here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap one side bring it around and, and I'll wrap this one and then I'll bring them around and then I'll wrap both sides and one of them you have to do in two parts and the other one you leave the string on all right, the first thing we have to do, since we're going to use this, is the thread will run from side to side. And that puts too much tension through these holes. What I like to do is pull the thread out of this a bit. What I've been is pulling like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it back into the center. And so that it just feeds a more uniform tension as you wrap your bowstring, okay? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Just keep a little tension on it so it doesn't go on there too loose because then there's no point in this. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start first wrapping. Now, you have to have a shuttle. Now, you can make one. I have one here that my wife Sheila got this when she was like eight years old. So that would be like in 1958. And... Uh, it was with a knitting thing or something like that. But it is a shuttle. It has a slot in each end. And of course you can just take and cut two V's into a small piece of wood and accomplish the same thing. This one has some sentimental value. So what I do is I put this in here. Like that. Yeah. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this one side, tie it off, then I'm going to do the other side, rotate it around on the ends and finish up, and then do the loop on the other end. So in order to start, we're going to take the thread, and what we're going to do is we're going to lay the thread down along the bowstring like this, and then we're going to wrap over it down the thread. And then you can pull that snug, and that will make it tight to the string. Okay? It's been a while since I had to make a bowstring. All right, so I'm going to put my thumb right where the knot is, slide the, the identifying thread out of the way. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this by hand, nice and tight, five times before I pull it snug. And it has to be snug. So there we are, five wraps. I'm going to take the loose end right here, right there. There's the threads. It's been wrapped five times. Now the cool thing about this is now, now all I have to do is keep the tension on this snug and rotate this over. Now I'm going to do a few more wraps before I cut this end off. And sometimes you'll note that your tension is just a, your tension is a little bit too loose or too tight. And then the screw on the side right here just tighten it just a little bit to add a little more tension to it. Now I have enough on there that I can uh, probably cut off the loose end. And you should feel some drag when you're flipping it over. Kevlar, there you go, cut slower. All right, and when I turn it, as I turn it, I, I kind of put a little tension toward the part that I've already done, this part here so that it wraps tight. If it's not wrapping tight, then you, you have to slide it up and snug it up. But it's actually really quite easy. It takes a little bit of practice, and then you can whip through these things pretty darn fast, okay? So you can see how it goes, all right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bit here, and then I'm going to swing the camera around and let you see. So there you go. You can see how that looks. It's wrapped it up really nice and tight, and we're just going to do that seven inches and then tie it off. And I'll show you how to tie off because all your wrappings on a bowstring tie off the exact same way. I think this could be just a little bit tighter so I'm going to take the nut, the wing nut, and just tighten it a little bit. Make it so it snugs down a little tighter. I want these ends to be pretty tight because it's a tillering string and it gets abused pretty badly all the times. We have just done our first wrap we haven't tied off yet so that's what I'm going to show you how to do we're going to pull the thread out we're going to put our hand here we're going to come around the hand now we're going to wrap it inside here and come over it this direction and we're going back towards where we ended inside that loop we made. You need at least five loops in there. But I'm not gluing it, so I'm going to do a couple extras. Because I have to redo these fairly often. Alright, so now we've got the loop. And if you see, it's threaded across here, coming this way, looping back this way. Now, we're going to take the thread pull out some extra thread, we're going to bring it in and pull it underneath where we're going over where we started right here. So now what we can do is as we hand wrap onto that here, it wraps on on the left and it wraps off on the right. So that just like we started going over that thread in the beginning, we're actually going over the thread on the end. Now I have to oftentimes pull these up snug because I don't get them as tight as they should be. So I, after every few or so I'll look and if I have to, there's a gap in there, I'll pull those threads up tight so they're actually snug. So I have about eight threads on there and I've got it nice and tight. So you see now, you can see how we have just the loop there. We grab here, we tighten that and pull it down. Pull it snug. There you go. It's tied off. All right. You can see how we wrap back, and it's tied right in here. It's laced over and under. So that completes that one. 
So we're going to always cut away the best you can so that you don't actually cut your bowstring. So now what we have to do is we have to actually do the other one right where those two strings are right there. So we're going to do that just like we did the first. Review. We're doing the next side just a review. We bring it up to right where we want to start where that string was tied. We lay the string down along the bow string. We're going to take this and we're going to wrap over that string at least five times. Alright there we go. Now I'm going to grab this loose end right here and I'm going to pull it snug under um, that now that's all on its own I'm going to do a couple more I think just because that looks a little short now I'm a little wide so I'm going to pull that down now I can just bring that up and start wrapping it with server alright now I'm going to cut off the loose piece Try not to hit your bowstring with your sharp knives. And now we can just plug away. Okay, you can see how that's coming. Review on tying off. This is the second side. All right, we've pulled the server out. We put our hand there. We give ourselves some thread. Now we come over and come from underneath and wrap the other way back towards to where you just finished. And give yourself eight wraps. You can hear Chip out there talking to me. He thinks he should be fed. Alright, so there we go. Okay, so we have the loop from here around to here. We came from underneath and wrapped up to here. So I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pull some thread out here. Pull it up underneath where I'm over top on the left right here. Now I'm going to wrap and come over and keep my threads tight. I pull them back with a thumb as I go to make sure they stay tight and up against each other. Now on this particular end we're on the uh, the second wrap so we're not going to cut this one off. We're going to leave this one in place and when I slide this string down you'll see now you see we have one loop left here. Now we just take the string, we slide it out from underneath and let it pull in. Now we snug it up nice and tight, press it down. And now if I was making a bow string for my bow to shoot all the time, I would put some Martin cement under that. Just a reminder. Oh! I wasn't going to cut that. Good thing that knife isn't very sharp and this is Kevlar. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this around in the string. Now it's a little low and I want it snug so I'm going to pull it up high and I'm going to pull the other side other side down and put it at an angle which will make the string snugger alright what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab here and here and I'm going to rotate the string and bring it around to bring the serving to the to the post get rid of that loose wrap we don't need that anymore just get in the way alright now you see you can see on the post that I have lined these up and the one overlaps the other one slightly. Now I'm going to have a big loop here. That's why I made these so long. All right, Because of when you're first tilling a bow it's quite wide. All right, When it's finished it's going to be like that on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, pull some string out on here. Remember we want it in the center, right? So now we're going to run it back in just like I showed you before and get it all in the center, put a little pressure on it with your thumb, you see that? And just so it's on there kind of snug, it doesn't have to be tight. Sometimes the stuff is so raveled it wants to go into a knot like that and prevent it from going through. So if it doesn't want to go through, pull on it a bit, snug it out because it'll ravel up slightly. Now what I want to do is I'm going to wrap this around there up to here, pull it all together, and then wrap it back down to here and tie it off. And that's what gives me the loop, you see? Alright, so I'm going to go. Now this needs to be a little tighter than just doing the string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snug the wing nut. 
And what you have to be careful when you do this, it's real easy for it to accidentally not um, wrap right up against the, the wrap before it. So you keep an eye on that. Sometimes you, you have to get it in line properly and then go with it. Now this is nice and snug. I would like it just a little bit snugger, so I'm going to snug it a bit more. And you can tell it's snug because it's starting to twist these. Alright, so it's pulling tight. If it's not tight, these won't twist. Alright, so it's adding enough tension to cause it to twist. Now I'm going to want a fairly big loop here, probably two inches. Alright, now what I'm going to do is make it so it starts going backwards the other direction. Okay. And we're going to go back down. Now, on any bowstring, the bottom loop can always be smaller than the upper loop. And so I make my loops smaller on the bottom so they don't readily come off. Now a lot of people put little rubber bands and little things around the end of their bow for their strings not to come undone and, and that's all fine and dandy. But if you put a small loop on it, once it's formed in there, it's not going to want to actually come undone. Alright, it'll just stay there and that's kind of cool. Nothing wrong with putting those little rubber boots on your bow. It kind of protects the end of your bow a bit and uh, keeps the string in place and if you want to do that that's fine and uh, we'll talk about tuning a bow and string and length and all those things yet once this bow is built and we're making it so it's a shooter not just a bow so now I have this well enough it's time to actually tie off again again let's just do that just to show you just for fun there we are again we're going to pull this out Put the hand in there, make the loop. Okay, put the hand in there where it ended. That makes your loop. You're going to come from underneath and go to the inside and wrap it back toward where you left. Now this is the final on this one, so I'm actually going to put a few extras on it. Five with Martin Cement will do the job just fine. Actually, most glues will work, but you got to remember that the bowstring itself is waxed. Glue does not adhere to wax. When we're building bows and other fine furniture, we use wax to prevent glue from sticking to the product. So, don't think it's any different for a bowstring. Okay, now we pull from underneath and we just re-wrap that coming back. And as the one in front wraps on, the one on the right side here wraps off. Wrap on, wrap off. Wait, it sounds like... Kung Fu Archery or something. Wax on, wax off. Isn't that what it is? From Paris with love. <laughs> All right. With Travolta. All right, there you go. You see that? Let's zero in and take a look. Now, for some reason, I have more on one side than the other. Now, that happens. Now, when that happens, and you'll see that for some reason, I adjusted the other side so there's, there's more here than there is here. They should be equal, but somehow I missed that marker for somehow. I'm not sure what I did. It doesn't really matter. This is going to happen. and uh, So it's no big deal. Okay, We're going to start on down here on the string. We're going to wrap up over here, then pull both together, and then wrap back down. And that will give us our double wrap holding the loop. This loop will be, still be big enough. If it wasn't, I would have to extend this down and do it. But it's long enough, it'll be fine. Alright, things happen. Don't, let, don't worry about it. Don't get upset. Just go, oh, alright, how can I fix that? And problem solved. As always, we start, we're going to use the shuttle to start with here. Alright. Because I'm going to start on a single side. I'm not putting them both together the right width. So I'll put the shuttle in. So I can actually do this. It's going to be a little hard because it's narrow in there. But uh, that's okay. Let's get some string in here and make it in the center. There we go. And put it back in like we always do. 
these are such a really good device. If you can't afford to buy one, not that they're expensive, but if you're short on bucks, you can just take a piece of tin off a can, cut it, and, and bend it in a U-shape, drill a hole in the center, and put a bolt through it, and you have one. That's what I had when I was a kid. Because they didn't make these things. Now they actually make them, and these are actually quite superior with the multiple holes and tension. Alright, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put this on here and I am going to do the obligatory wrap over the line. See, I have the line down along there, along the bowstring, and I'm wrapping over it. Alright, I got five wraps. I'm going to pull it snug. Alright, now what I can do, so now I can put that there and I can just wrap it. Now, I will still cut off the loose end, but I'm going to have it in here a little bit. What you see there is I started it on string. Now I have both strings pulled together, and now we're just wrapping both strings together. And it should be tight enough to make these right here twist up. You see how they're, they're twisting over? That's about how snug you want it to be. All right? You'll probably botch up the odd bowstring. The good thing is, is that you can usually salvage them if you're really, really careful. If you don't, if you tick one piece of the bowstring, the black Dacron B50, do not use it. All right, that will be a weak spot in the string, and you'll pay for that at a later time. So don't do that. All right, if that's the case. You can take and unwrap that wrap tie it off with a double square knot and then what you can do is add another loop to it if you lost one loop you just tie off like I did in the beginning and tie a second loop put a wrap around tie it off and now you have the obligatory 18 strands generally speaking a a 50 pound bow to 55 pounds 16 strands to 18 strands is fine okay uh, a, a 60 to 75 pound bow probably 18 strands and when I built that bow that went to hunt buffalo I made that it was 80 some odd pounds 83 or 88 I forget what it was it was way up there I made that like 22 strands of bow tough or not bow tough or whatever it is B50 I have actually gone right up and made the loop see that so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to back and wrap all the way back down to, to here and then tie it off. Now you'll have a loop at both ends and I'll have finished my tiller and string for my bows. Let's wrap. <laughs> I hate wrap. All right. I don't even want to try to think about making a wrap out of building a bow string. Round and round and round we go. Anyway, so you can see how that's working. It's working just fine. Now this bow string doesn't have to be all fancied up and everything because I'm not sent it to anybody. It's a tillering bowstring. I just want to make sure it's dead secure. Okay? And that's all that matters. And this bowstring is. I saw the loose end right here. You see that? That I tied off. That I didn't cut off. Because now this one, I'm going to lay and then wrap back the opposite direction. So the possibility of that string ever coming undone through the raveling unraveling is almost impossible. I've never had one that's been double wrapped like this that came undone. You only need to be over it like five wraps or whatever. I'm going to cut it off. Just don't cut anything else. Now I would like to tie off just onto the the D50 but that's not going to work because I got so much extra here. Or extra here you can see that. So I'm just going to tie off now. I got lots there for strength. I'll just put some extra wraps on it and pull it extra tight. We've made our loop. We've back wrapped the other direction. And you'll know if you wrap the wrong way because what will happen is as you tighten it, more wraps go on instead of off. We can take our string, bring it up, put it right to here. You see that? Bring it up. I've got this right here. It's going to come right in there. And now I can wrap the other way and finish this off. 
Okay, I got the loop. We're pulling it down snug. If you're not careful with it and you let go of that loop too soon, it'll form a little twist and when you pull it in, it will make a knot there and it won't pull tight. So keep your fingers on that loop until you get right down there. Okay, now pull it snug. All right, not bad for it. Let's get down here. There are two loops on each end. If you're making a shooter, of course, in the middle, you have to put about eight inches in the middle where your knocking point's going to go, and it goes on exactly the same way, except you have no loops to deal with. Pretty simple and easy, and we'll do one of those when this bow is finished. There you go. And I'm hoping this bow string will now allow me to string this bow. If not, I'm going to need help to do it. Uh, this is getting old thing in what it's cracked up to be, I guess. <laughs> you can buy all kinds of commercial bow stringers for recurved bows, but the problem is, is they quite often have pockets and things, and recurved bows, when they're rough, are quite wide, sharp edged. I still knock some of the sharpness off with a, an orbital sander, but it's wicked on strings and stringers. So I just made my own, and it's not like most. What I did is I got some creep. All right, now creep is, you buy this stuff by the block. It's $8 for this block of creep. It's rubber that used to go on the soles, like soles of shoes that had creep soles on them. They're actually really quite nice. And what you do, this is, when you're using your drum sanders and all these sanding things, people throw their sanding rigs out, their sandpaper and things, before they're actually, they're not worn out, they're just impacted with sawdust or glass and they don't sand anymore. So you get a block of this from a place like Lee Valley Tools or Grizzly uh, Industrial, and I recommend Grizzly in the States and Lee Valley in Canada. Uh, uh, both are awesome. And uh, anyway, so I just cut two corners off that. I cut two triangles out of it. All right, drilled a hole through it. And now these go on each limb and then pull. The problem is, is now masking tape is slippery. It's not like the fiberglass grabs onto this creep really nicely. So what I've had to do is come up with an idea on, well, how can I keep these from moving when I'm stepping on the string? And there's Sheila and Ryan, Ryan just pulling in from their trip to Regina. So what I do is I put a clamp on them. Okay, that, that's a little bit of black grouse scotch and never drink rye when you're building bows because rye makes you angry and hostile and things like that and when you're building bows and things don't go well well that's not a great plan where good scotch well it just kind of makes you a little more mellow slower down do a better job just don't drink so much you shouldn't be doing the job <laughs> there you go anyhow so we're going to string this bow all right these are just spring clamps we use these you should always have at least two of them in the shop. They're dirt cheap. They're like four bucks a piece or something. So what I'm going to do to keep that uh, bow stringer from moving is just clamp this to the limb. One. Now you want to make sure it's underneath the bow string so you don't pull the bow string. All right, there's that. The bow string is free. That'll keep it from moving. And this is only on heavy bow strings. Most bows I can just string them up, but this one is being made for a guy that. Uh, What's a heavy bow? Here's Chip talking. She sees Sheila. All right, so we're going to clamp this one down too. All right, you see this? All right, make sure the string is free enough. All right, let's see if we can do this. There we go. Wow, that was a tough one. You step on the string and you pull the bow up. And I have no idea how many pounds this is, but we're going to take a lot of pounds off before we do anything else. I'm here to tell you that before I unstring it. And one string, one limb is quite a bit stronger than the other. All right. Now, if you look at this, this is narrow here and wider here. So that means the left limb is pulling harder and bringing the string closer to the limb and the right limb is weaker being pulled back. Alright, so we're going to go and 
make this is stretching out a little bit strings always do and uh, wow stretch quite a bit uh, I've done a fairly good job laying out the tiller on this it's kind of down the middle see that a little bit off right here and pretty much in the middle there so we got a little bit of tillering to do that's awesome I'm pretty pleased with that so really what I have to do now is just narrow these limbs down to make the bow lighter and what I should, probably should do is test the poundage on this bow before I do that so I don't go too far and make it too light and that's all folks for today